Hello gardeners. Thank you for tuning in today. You're going to be looking at some fantastic plants today that are in bloom from mid to late June. So if there's something that you're looking for um, where you want it to be in bloom in that time period, you're going to learn a lot in this video and we're going to see a lot of beautiful plants both in my garden and at other locations that you can use to help make your gardens better. And I'm sure you've noticed the beautiful shrub behind me. This is oak leaf hydrangea. And not only does it bloom for a long time with these absolutely gorgeous blossoms, but in the fall, the leaves turn colors as well. So it's just a great three season shrub that you can use and that it attracts pollinators. It's a great home for them. With Native Plant Channel, the goal is to help gardeners create gardens that are more eco-friendly that will help sustain populations i don't know if you saw the butterfly just coming by but that's what we're trying to do provide native plants that will encourage all types of butterflies and other pollinators uh, to come to our gardens and to provide a habitat for them so when planning your garden think about how important a large shrub like oak leaf hydrangea is um, it needs no maintenance, no pruning. Um, it takes up a large amount of space in the garden. So um, you need very minimal weeding in this area. Um, it's shading out the rest of the ground and below it, right? Um, and it's going to give you a three season per for performance later with beautiful fall color to its leaves. And it's called oak leaf because the shape of the leaves resemble that of uh, oak trees. Um, it takes full sun to part shade, and it is a pollinator magnet, as you are seeing here. There's um, a lot of insects flying by, a lot of bees, and one other attribute is that it's lightly fragrant, so it's very pleasant fragrance in the area that you're going to enjoy. So consider this native shrub for your garden. Gardeners, take a look at the eye-catching yellow of sun drops. Um, this is an important plant for native bees, providing lots of pollen for them as well as other insects. And it likes heat, it likes medium to dry soils, does well in poor soils, and does well in drought as well. Now, it's got a fascinating history where it's been used for everything from making dyes to medicines. And another interesting thing is that its scientific name, Anathra, um, refers to a plant, comes from the Greek, which refers to a plant whose roots, when soaked in wine, would have allowed people to tame wild beasts. Makes you wonder what they were doing, right? And Native Americans used it to rub on their moccasins in, before hunting in order to mask the smells and in order to be able to get closer to the animals they were hunting. You might be familiar with Baptisia or Blue False Indigo. This is its relative, white wild indigo. Um, it is important to many pollinators, is the larval food plant for several skippers, and is native in several areas of New York, although for some reason it skips other northeast states. And uh, for those of you who might have cows, it contains a toxin that is known to be fatal to cows but uh, a lovely plant with uh, dark grayish stems. Here you are looking at American smoke bush. Those plumes give it its name. And if you're familiar with the European smoke bush, which has the deep reddish leaves, uh, this one blooms over a longer period of time. It starts in mid-June and continues well into July with these lovely plumes. It also has great fall color. The leaves turn orangey yellow. Um, this one is only two to three years old. It's developed this central leader, but as you can see, it's quite tall already. Um, it is drought tolerant, does not like wet soils, will grow 15 to 30 feet high. And uh, interestingly, it has deep orange yellow heartwood that was used for dyes during the Civil War. Um, it was liked so much for this purpose that it was almost driven to extinction. Although it's native from Tennessee on south, it is actually hardy to zone four. 
using native plants is the best way that we as individual gardeners can help improve our ecosystems. There is so much that we can do to help our butterflies, our bees, and our many other pollinators, which in turn helps our birds, who are also declining in population along with our insects. You really don't need a large space to create a native plant garden. You don't need a large space in order to help improve our ecosystem. And the more gardeners that take just a small section of their property and convert it from lawn to native plants, the better off our world will be. The plant that you're looking at now with the fine grayish leaves is pearly everlasting, which is obviously not in bloom yet. It will bloom with white flowers in a few weeks. Um, however, I'm showing it to you because if you take a look at the tips, you're going to see some wear and tear on the tips. This is what's so great about this plant. It is the host plant for the American Lady Butterfly. And uh, basically what you're seeing is caterpillars that are hiding in there and growing in the pearly everlasting, which grows in full sun, is an easy perennial to grow, and uh, will have pretty white flowers that are also used in dried flower arrangements. Here is bush honeysuckle that was planted uh, just a few weeks ago and it is now blooming. Lovely le little yellow flowers and these have been attracting um, a number of pollinators and uh, this shrub will also change colors in fall. The leaves will look gorgeous in fall. When I started gardening many years ago, I started gardening to grow some vegetables and to grow some pretty flowers. But then over the so many years, my knowledge has evolved and I became much more interested in butterflies and attracting butterflies to my garden. And I began learning so much more about native plants and why we should be using them in our garden. So over the years, I've been transferring over to native plants where now pretty much almost everything I buy is native. So my garden is not 100% native. It's probably about 80% native and growing as I buy new items. Um, however, there are some items that are not native that will be remaining in my garden. For example, there are some sentimental plants. Um, I have a peony that an aunt of mine gave me many years ago and she passed away um, she passed away so many years ago, but I always intend to have her peonies with me. So um, I will never be 100% native. However, 80% and I'm creating fantastic habitat for our uh, pollinators. Feverfew is one of the non-native plants that I have. And the reason for that is it's excellent at attracting pollinators, as you see here with this hair streak butterfly. I'm not sure which of the hair streaks this is. And uh, Feverfew is also very deer tolerant, which is a big problem for me. The plants that you're going to see now are not located in my garden, but in nearby areas and other gardens. However, they are plants that bloom from mid-June until the end of June and even into July. I'm starting here with common milkweed. And most people are familiar with the importance of milkweed to the monarch butterfly. However, a study has shown that milkweed is important not only for monarch butterflies, but helps support 147 different species of insects. So it's an extremely valuable perennial for our wildlife. So think about putting some in your garden and how you will be creating a great habitat. It is not, however, a plant for a small garden unless you have an area where it can be contained, like for example, by concrete or asphalt along an asphalt driveway or something like that, because it does spread underground to form colonies. So it's a little difficult if you have a small garden and there are other plants you want to grow, um, it's a bit difficult to contain it. If you have this plant in your garden, however, you'll be able to attract monarch butterflies and you'll be able to watch as they lay eggs on the leaves, you'll be able to see their caterpillars grow into adult monarchs. Just a great opportunity to witness this right in your own home. During World War II, 
Children were paid to collect the fluffy material from its seed pods and it was used for flotation vest. Um, it's also been used for all kinds of stuffing like pillows in the past. It no longer is. Another great feature about common milkweed, besides all the life it supports, is that it just smells wonderful. The fragrance um, in the area right now, I wish you could smell it. It just smells fantastic. A highlight of the summer garden is this beautiful red bee balm, which is very eye-catching and does a great job attracting hummingbirds. It is uh, it grows up to four feet tall with strong, sturdy stems, so it doesn't flop over as other tall perennials might. When it is done blooming, you should cut it back so that it will continue to grow healthily. And it is uh, deer resistant for most people, although it is not for me. A lovely shrub that blooms from mid-June on into July is this beautiful Virginia Sweet Spire, which if you have a wet location will do very well for you. It likes most soil, does tolerate dry soil, forms thickets, and tolerates flooding. It is hard, it's native from New Jersey to Florida and attracts bees. Another beautiful shrub which is highly valued by wildlife for the attractive berries that it produces is elderberry. It grows 5 to 12 feet high and wide in full sun to part shade. Unfortunately, the deer like it too. I really appreciate everything you are doing to create a better ecosystem right in your garden. And it's just something that you will enjoy. Um, you will be contributing rather than causing harm. You are contributing to making a better world and I appreciate what you're doing. So please um, appreciate what you are doing yourself and continue to learn and continue to add more native plants. Well, so I hope you've gotten lots of inspiration today from what you've seen from the many beautiful plants in bloom and that you will go out and put some of them in your gardens. Um, I hope this has been helpful for you. If it has, please make sure you subscribe. Please make sure you take a look at Native Plant Channel for the many videos available there that will give you other ideas of what you can use in your gardens. Um, and again, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for making our world a better place. Keep gardening. Have a great day. Thank you.